What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, I'm sure some of you fall into this. Just kind of sick of the same old, same old from designers, even some niche brands doing it. Just these run-of-the-mill, kind of generic in many ways, scent profiles that have been done to death many times before. Well, there are fragrances out there that even if they're a little similar to some of those, maybe they just do it a little better, maybe the quality's a little better, or just something that's completely out of the norm. So in this video, I've got 10 fragrances that'll help elevate your collection and kind of take it to that next level, from basic to elite. So stay tuned. So in this video, there's gonna be a wide variety of mid-level designers. There's a very cheap fragrance here and there's some higher level niche, but we're starting off with one of the most underrated designers, my favorite Cartier fragrance that I've tried. It is from the Pasha de Cartier line. This is Pasha de Cartier Parfum. So again, this goes back to the timeless Fougere style. This is just done in a bit of a different manner. It's very woody. There's a creamy sandalwood here. It's boozy, a nice, kind of resinous feel to this benzoin giving it a strong sticky ambery presence there's an herbaceous spicy tone to this one very elegant very rich and smooth at the same time it has a strong aura and scent bubble to it it's not too absurdly loud if you spray it on the heavier side any fragrance can be pretty loud but with this one this is a less is more type of fragrance that you would want to leave a little room for discovery because it does beg you to dress it up just a little bit I would say something maybe a polo like I'm wearing or better this is a much more masculine man's man type of scent profile just very refined while not being too serious because there's a nice boozy tone here this is that fougere taken to the next level. It's not just a basic barbershop scent that has been done to death with some aromatics and some herbs and so on. Here, like I said, a very resinous, ambery feel with a nice boozy hit. This is just gorgeous. If you haven't gotten your nose on this one yet, this will definitely take your collection to the next level. Pasha de Cartier Parfum. Now, the fragrance this is flankered from is a very fresh, versatile everyday wear that's kind of known as an alternative in many ways to Aventus. Some people compare it to it. Don't really think it smells much like Aventus, but they do the same job. Here, this is a much deeper, richer, and more complex take on that. It's much stronger. It is a 40% oil concentration. We are talking about Mancera's Intense Cidrapoise. This is a powerhouse. This is easy to go nose blind to, anosmic, for those of you wanting the technical term, because within 30 minutes, it'll fade. I, I won't smell it, it hardly. I will have to look for it. But after a few hours, I'll get this intense whiff throughout the remaining life of it because it's just so inherently strong that you'll go nose blind to it. But boy, oh God, it's so gorgeous. It's got this slightly tart but sharp lemon at the top. There's a fruity sweetness here, but there's also this kind of sweet Cambodian oud that offers a little bit of an animalistic touch to go with this leather note. It is much more of a suede leathery feel than the original. It's warm and spicy. This is an enhanced take, intense take as the name would insinuate of Mancera Cidrapoise. Just magnificent. You will lose a lot of the freshness and mass appeal of the original, but this, this is on another level, in my opinion. If you want the elevated version of the scent profile, which goes with the name of this topic of this video, this fragrance fits it so well that it's not your basic run-of-the-mill, mass-appealing, everyday scent, which in some ways some people would dub the original that way, whereas here, no, there's a lot more going on here. There's more animalics and such. It's so much more spicy. This is just a, reach, a rich, deep take that is a powerhouse of the original. This is definitely one of the better Manceras you can spend your money on. It's Mancera Intense Cidre Poise. This is one of the sexiest smelling fragrances ever made. It's one of the best designer iris fragrances ever made, in my humble opinion. This is just such an intoxicating scent profile. If you want that date night fragrance that's going to kind of elevate your game, you might want to check out Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Mal Le Parfum. It's La Mal with some added spice and a waxy, powdery iris note. You gotta be a big fan of that designer type iris, that lipsticky, waxy type of smell. <sighs> man, man, which I am a humongous fan of that style and of this fragrance in particular. Now, do I prefer a natural Florentine iris that has more of an earthy tone? Sometimes, sure. 
but I kind of enjoy that intoxicating playfulness of the waxy fantasy iris note, which this is. Performance is great, and like I said, this is a sexy smelling fragrance to me and to my wife, which my wife's not the biggest fan of all of my iris fragrances, just certain ones, but she is a huge fan of this one in particular. That's why I say if you want to take that that date night fragrance to the next level because there's so many options out there that are kind of run-of-the-mill at this point that have been recommended to death that so many people have. This one, don't get me wrong, has plenty of hype behind it, but when it comes to a designer evening wear scent that's really geared, toward, geared towards going to dinner, I think this is the one. This will definitely take your collection to the next level if you choose this as your main date night choice. Check this one out if you haven't yet. It is magnificent. It's Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Le Parfum. This next fragrance is a niche pick that is not easy to get. It was recently in stock at Max Aroma and sold out the same day it got back in stock. It's not the easiest thing to find, but it is, for me, one of the five best fragrances I have ever smelled. It is one of the five best fragrances in my massive collection of fragrances. It is Virtus. This is Vanilla Oud. This is next level stuff right here, guys. It is based around the namesake, vanilla and oud, but here, leathery saffron, warm and spicy, it's very animalic. Oh, this is just such a great fragrance. This is one that I strongly encourage you to get your nose on. I mean, it's not the safest blind buy out there, obviously. Oh, very warm and ambery, and like I said, it has this animalistic, almost rawhide-like smell to it. It's a muskiness to it as well, uh, almost like a deep, rich civet castorium type of situation just the musk here the way it's composed with all the other notes it has this rich dark edge to it with a creamy vanilla and the oud's a little funky i wouldn't call this the most challenging fragrance out there but i would call this masterfully composed for sure like i said one of the five best fragrances i've ever smelled i can't get enough of smelling this one it is so 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 good guys if you can get yourself a decant whenever they come back in stock, Decant X, Max Aroma, wherever, whomever decants this fragrance. Again, I strongly encourage you to get your nose on this one because I highly doubt that when you try this one, you're not going to want to secure a bottle and take your collection to the next level because this is probably the most important fragrance in this video for taking your collection to that next level. If not the most important, it's definitely one of the two or three most elevating of scents in this video you know what i mean you guys some of you have heard me talk about this one and give it sing its praises give it high praise put it on a pedestal as i'm doing right now i strongly encourage you to check this one out not a fragrance for everyone but extremely intoxicating for what it is being based around these animalics and this kind of funky oud it just really works this is a masterpiece for a lack of a better term it's a masterpiece again we're talking vertus vanilla oud this next designer fragrance is one of the most surprising fragrances I've blind bought and picked up in a long time. It's very sweet. At the top, it's actually quite an earthy floral that dries into a soft, powdery, and creamy floral vanilla combo. We're talking about Youp Homme Le Parfum, specifically the Le Parfum. So anytime I've posted Scent of the Day post about this one, whatever, people start talking about, oh yeah, I love Youp. It's bad. I used to wear it all the time back in the 80s, early 90s. I'm not talking about Youp Om. This is the Le Parfum. This is a recent flanker. I want to say 2022 is when this one came out. This is not the same scent. It is not a high oil concentration version of Youp Om. This is a different scent profile. You will get a faint resemblance because of the sweetness, but I smell it in the air. Very earthy, violety type of smell, the way this iris is done. And then it will shift quickly. It's almost gourmand sweet with this earthy violet tone. And it shifts into a soft, powdery, creamy fragrance. Creamy sweet. It really does. It's very two-staged, monstrous performer. I picked this up from Amazon for $47. bucks. i will put the link below. I'm not sure at the recording of this in this moment if it's in stock. It's not the easiest fragrance to find, but if you can get your hands on this one, especially in the sub-$50 price point, this is that one of those fragrances, especially from a sub $50 price point that will elevate your collection in many ways because I don't have an iris fragrance that smells anything like this. We've talked about one iris fragrance already in this video, completely different from this. You have to like sweet, you have to like floral and powdery, but if you like any of those things, this is next level. Get your nose on this one if you can. I don't know how easy it would be to get a sample, but 
like I said, I'll link where I got it from at Amazon down below. This is Yup Homme Le Parfum. This next niche fragrance is a bona fide showstopper. It is immensely powerful. It's animalistic, very leather suede dominant. There's a little bit of an oud funk to, heat to this. A lot of earthy tobacco and deep, rich, dark, smoky resins to this. Spicy as can be. It's a Harhoff Signature Leather Tobacco. Like I said, showstopper. Absolute showstopper. If you're looking for that fragrance that will garner attention, I'm, I guarantee you this will garner some attention. A, because it's just so uber masculine, and B, because it's just so uber powerful. You put those two together, you have a showstopper, a show out, a, a very assertive powerhouse. Strong personality to this fragrance. Damn, it's good though. Good Lord Almighty. Definitely get a sample of this one. You can get 2ML samples from Zaharoff's website. I will have a link with 10% off link. The actual link provides 10% off. So you can get a sample and try this one. It is available in two different bottle sizes, but get the 2ML sample. God, it's engulfing the airspace. Whew. Get the 2ML sample. Get the experience. Is it going to be for everyone? Absolutely not. This is definitely not going to be for everyone, but there's a lot of people that appreciate this fragrance, I can guarantee you, that have bought these bottles. But it's not a super safe blind buy unless you just know that you love heavy leather, tobacco, dark, smoky spices. If you like that kind of stuff, you're going to love this. This is really going to take your collection to the next level, whether you get the two ounce or the four ounce. But at least get the sample, get the experience, and see if it's for you. If you're looking for that showstopper, this is definitely that and then some. Zaharoff Signature Leather Tobacco. This next one's the cheapest fragrance in the video. It can be found sub $20 price point, around $15 bucks from Joma Shop. Um, I just recently did a full review on this one. It's a pineapple and woods-based fragrance. We are talking about Latafa's Kate Alpha Sun. Yes, super mega cheap fragrance that I believe can change the game a little bit for you because this isn't your average run-of-the-mill tropical scent. I've had people in the comments mention... Aventus mixed with BR540 because of saffron and pineapple? Not really. Not, not really at all to me. Because it's a very juicy pineapple, a ripe pineapple smell with a lot of woods. The woods really dominate this fragrance. You do get a little bit of saffron, but I mean, I'm not going to completely write off that there could be a little bit of what they were going for there with some BR540 vibes. And I don't get any Aventus from this, but I guess if anything, maybe a little bit of Baccarat Rouge, but... This is just me answering some of the comments I've seen. I don't personally get that from it. What I do get, like I said, is a very ripe, juicy, sweet pineapple note with a lot of woods. It's literally that simplistic. Performance is above average for me, not weak, not a beast, not run-of-the-mill average. Six to eight hours range every time I've worn it, which I have worn it quite a bit at this stage. This is one of the biggest bang-for-your-buck fragrances I've ever gotten my hands on. It is a safe blind buy. In my opinion, it is $15 freaking dollars, and it doesn't smell even remotely close to costing $15. The quality's decent here. I wouldn't call it high-level niche by any means. It is Middle Eastern clone oils here. It's a Latafa fragrance, but it smells fantastic. And for those of you that like to layer, from what I've seen with feedback, this is actually a fantastic fragrance to layer with others. I'm not the layering type. I like it as a standalone, but for $15, this is not your basic run-of-the-mill fresh fruity fragrance. It definitely has its own unique character in my opinion, and I greatly appreciate this one, and I think it's worth a look. If you want to spend just a little to change the game up in your collection a little bit, this might be the fragrance to check into. Latafa, Kate Alpha Sun. This next niche fragrance is kind of the angel, sh angel share killer for me. Because it smells similar to Killian's Angel Share, but it's spicier, and this earthy tobacco really shines as it dries. This is intoxication at its finest. We are talking about Soma Parfums Halcyon. Another one I've done a full review on. I have sung this one's praises all through the winter time on into now in the early spring time. So good. If you like cinnamon, a nice, authentic spoonful of cinnamon type of smell mixed with this kind of boozy feel that's not overdone it's warm and ambery it's an earthy type of tobacco that doesn't overtake the fragrance too much there's a little bit of creaminess here as well this might be the best cinnamon top note i've ever smelled 
I said it here and now in this video. I just every time I smell it, I'm like, God, this is such good cinnamon. If you're a fan of cinnamon and a fragrance, this I, I think this is the best cinnamon top note I've ever smelled. Seriously. And this is one that makes me kind of steer away from Angel Share because I love the way it smells. I had a decant of it and I was anticipating buying a bottle like this past year and then I came across this from Kingdom Steve sent it to me from Kingdom Fragrances and Blown away is an understatement with this particular fragrance. Yes, I have Latafas Kamra and some of the cheaper Middle Eastern clones and twists and inspired by fragrances and all that. But when it comes to quality, oh man, this for me blows, blows Angel Share out the water. Definitely sample worthy if nothing else, but this will take your collection to the next level for sure. Especially if you like cinnamon top notes. Soma Parfums, how's seal. In my personal opinion, aside from the Mall of Parfum, which is quite the unique date night fragrance. When it comes to spicy date night evening appropriate fragrances, when it comes to the designer market, this might be one of the best ever. Definitely one of the best currently on the market, in my opinion. Stronger with you, absolutely, from Emporio Armani. Huge fan of this one. No secret if you've been watching the channel in the last few months. Big, big fan of this scent profile. Again, back to that cinnamon spice. Nice rum, roasted chestnut, toffeed sweetness. I know not necessarily all of that is in the note breakdown, but that is in the original scent DNA between the Eau de Toilette and the Intensely, which were the predecessors to the scent profile. I do smell bits and elements from both of those fragrances plus rum in this one. I do believe this to be the ultimate version of the scent profile. It takes the best of all of the flankers, minus like the leather and oud flankers, for example. It is magnificent. It is magnificent. I'm a huge fan of Intensely. Don't get me wrong. I, I, really, all of the fragrances in this line. But this is the absolute, pun intended, best version of Stronger With You. That's why I felt like it was necessary to put in this video because certain designer fragrances can really elevate your collection. In my opinion, for my taste, especially my wife's taste, my wife even likes to spray this one on herself. She's done it twice so far. This is worth checking out. This is one of those... Armani designer fragrances of all things that can take your collection to the next level. It's worth trying. I don't know how easy it would be to get a sample. Bottles are scarce because they sell out so quickly, but if you can get your nose on this one, get your nose on it. It's that good. Strong with you, absolutely. This final pick is one of the booziest fragrances I own. It's super enjoyable for me. It speaks to me in many ways culturally because I am from South Louisiana. This is the only indie niche no, Soma Parfums is technically indie niche as well, as well as Zahara, so one of, I guess you could say, the indie, the great indie niche fragrances that are being featured in this video. Hefty bourbon, sweet praline, spices, it's city rhythm, New Orleans, jazz, and booze. My favorite from the house, I continue to rave about this one. It's intoxicating, because you will smell intoxicated when you spray this one on. Hefty, hefty dose of bourbon. Oh, man. It really encompasses the nightlife, the alcoholism of New Orleans and Bourbon Street specifically, just the party city that New Orleans, Louisiana is, mixed in with a lot of the food culture. Like I said, the spices, the praline, this patisserie type of baked bread smell that I kind of immediately think beignets at Cafe Olay, for example. This is Cafe Du Monde. Don't, uh, Cafe Olay is a drink. That's the drink you get at Cafe Du Monde. But Cafe Du Monde's beignets, world renowned. And like I said, pralines, like it doesn't get much better when it comes to homemade candy from the South than pralines. It's just oh, so good. Let's spray it, shall we? Get a sample. <laughs> I mean, I know I say that about all of these because all of these are so damn good. This is an exciting video to make for me because I get to smell 10 of the most phenomenal fragrances in my collection to talk to you guys about how these 10 fragrances, including this one, can elevate a basic collection, a run-of-the-mill collection, a hype beast mass appealing collection, because I got plenty of those too, don't get me wrong. But if you want some stuff that's really gonna wow, whether it be you in the wearing experience, which that should be the main goal, right? Or passers-by, potency is a strong suit for all of these fragrances, especially this 50% oil concentration. Like I said, intoxicating smelling, and you might smell a little intoxicated yourself because of all this bourbon, City Rhythm New Orleans, jazz and booze well that's the 10 that i have for you today and until next time do me a real quick favor go ahead and like comment subscribe 
So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. What of these 10 have you tried? Do you own? Did you pass on? Do you not feel the same? It's all good. Not everything's for everyone, but I'm willing to bet if you were to sample these, you're probably going to want to add them to your collection. And a lot of these are pretty easy to sample for the most part. Some of them a little bit more difficult than others, but I'll have links down below to all 10 of these fragrances. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, I'm extremely confident you'll thank me later because these are 10 of the best fragrances in my collection. Have a good one, guys.